Carolina This Week with Tim McGinnis. Good morning and welcome to Carolina This Week. I hope you had a terrific Thanksgiving. This morning we're going to be talking about the 7th Congressional District race. We have two candidates to introduce you to. First will be Ted Vick. He's a Democrat from Chesterfield County. Then we're going to hear from Dick Withington from the Grand Strand. First up, Ted Vick. State Representative Ted Vick, a Democrat from Chesterfield County. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks for having us, Tim. I'm asking everybody this right out of the gate. Why are you running? You know, I grew up, had the awesome opportunity to grow up in what I believe is the greatest country uh, that humankind's ever seen. You know, I had an opportunity to grow up in a little small town in the PD, and I had the opportunity to get educated, to get a job, and to live the American dream. I've been very blessed and was able to get back, give back to my country through military service and now through serving the General Assembly. And I'm running because nothing's getting done in Washington, D.C. And I believe we need leaders that are going to stand up make tough decisions and do what's right to get this country back on track and protect that American dream that helped me achieve what I achieved. All of you candidates are pioneers in this seventh congressional district, the first time that the seat's been open. Do you think it's somebody from the PD is going to have a tougher time running this race, or do you think that you have advantages by being from the PD rather than the Grand Strand? Well, you know, the Grand Strand is a big part of the district here in Ory County. Uh, it's a big part of the district, but it's not the majority of the district. Uh, the majority of the district, I think you'll find on this, once you get west of the Intercoastal Waterway, uh, it's pretty much, very much a lot, a lot alike, uh, all the way up through the PD. You got a lot of farming, you have a lot of industry, uh, and they have a lot of things in common and a lot of common interests. So uh, I think it's gonna be a, a, a battle in the end probably a Democrat from the PD versus a Republican from Ory County, and I think we're going to have a good fight. Let's talk about some of the issues real quick. Right now, this past week, we've heard a lot about the Super Committee and their inability to reach consensus. What do you think needs to happen in Washington to get Congress working together again? Or should Congress work together? Should it be po polarized and the parties doing their thing to further their own agenda and not coming together. Well, Congress have absolutely worked together in order to get things done in this country. Let me tell you something, nothing's getting done in Washington, D.C. because people are putting party and making political points ahead of doing the hard work of what I believe true statesmen ought to be doing, which is protecting this country, making decisions. We've got to tighten our belt, you know. We can't keep spending the way we're spending. But we can do that over a trajectory without causing major harm to our economy. Right now, this super committee is crucial that this super committee come up with solutions. You know, I saw a poll that said 57% of Americans believe that something ought to get done. Even if they disagree with what happens in the super committee, they believe something needs to get done to get things moving again and to get this country moving forward. Let's talk about health care. A lot of the Republican candidates that I've had on this show say they would make it one of the first things that they would do once they get to Washington to start stripping apart the president's health care law. What, what do you think about the health care law? All right, the Affordable Health Care Act uh, was something that was passed. It was a solution to a problem. We have a major health care problem in this country, and it's the fact that we're spending too much money as a percent of our GDP on health care. We're paying double what any other industrialized country on the face of this planet is paying for health care. We've got to rein in those costs. You know, over the last decade, our costs have gone seven to nine percent uh, a year increase in health care costs, where our GDP is only growing at now two percent. It was growing at three percent. So we can't, it's unsustainable. Um, you know, getting rid of the last solution doesn't necessarily fix the problem if you don't replace it with a better solution. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed uh, to repealing the uh, Affordable Health Care Act. I think it overregulates business. I think it's not healthy for our economy at this time. But we need to replace it with a better solution and find a better way in order to bring, rein in these health care costs and fix this problem. All right. State Representative Ted Vick, don't go anywhere. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more about the issues facing the 7th Congressional District, which you are running for that congressional seat. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Carolina This Week. My guest this morning is State Representative Ted Vick, who is running for the 7th Congressional District seat, this new seat, which is facing some challenges right now, so hopefully we'll get that seat all sealed in. But we were talking about the issues. We talked a little bit about health care. You wouldn't be opposed to repealing it and maybe drawing up a new plan, but you say something needs to be done about 
the escalating costs of health care and people who can afford it. Absolutely. And, you know, as I've been running for the last couple of months for this seat uh, with an exploratory committee and talking to business leaders, they'll tell you we cannot afford to continue to grow health care costs at the, at the rate that we've been growing it over the last couple of decades. It's unsustainable. Uh, and we've got to figure out a way, find a solution that works. Uh, if it's uh, the current Affordable Health Care Act uh, needs to be repealed, first of all, I think it's unconstitutional that the federal government mandate that a state do anything. Uh, that's not right. It's not constitutional. It's before the courts right now. We'll see what the courts say. My opinion is it's un unconstitutional. Let's talk about probably one of the biggest issues facing our area, which is I-73. Regardless whether you're PD or, or Grand Strand, this is something a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. Some people not, saying it's going to impact the environment negatively. Where do you stand on I-73? Well, first of all, let me say this about I-73. Uh, the federal government has a right to, because of the Commerce Clause, has a right to develop interstates uh, in this country. Um, whether we do it or not, as I said, is up for debate. Um, I think it'll be a huge uh, impact to our economy if we can build I-73. I was one of the ones that helped get the legislation passed so that we could have matching dollars through toll roads. I heard uh, one of your guests had commented that we can't afford it. Well, guess what? We've already identified the revenue source to pay for it to, as far as the state of South Carolina's obligation. Uh, the rest of the money will come from the federal government. It'll be a huge fiscal impact for our state. Uh, the tourism industry is an $18.4 billion industry in this state. The estimates that I've seen say that this will be a $2 billion increase in economic development for the state of South Carolina. You know, I don't know how we can afford not to build an interstate from I-95 to get to Myrtle Beach. We're the largest destination on the East Coast that does not have an interstate going to it. That just doesn't make sense. It just makes all the sense in the world. That's why our forefathers 30 years ago in 1982 started this study committee to find out what could be done to get an interstate from I-95 to, to US-17. It's important, we need to do it in an environmentally sensitive way, but we need to do it so that it's a win-win. If you're given two years in Washington, what will you do to make that happen? I'll make sure that we identify those revenue sources to match the 90%. Basically, it's a 90% it's a match. We put up 10% at state level. I'll do everything I can to make sure that other 90% uh, percent of the funds is identified and I'll fight and slug out hard just like I have for the last eight years in, in Columbia for my constituents. What's good for Myrtle Beach, what's good for the PD is going to be good for this new district. Let's talk a little bit about the PD. Some areas of the PD, your county being one of them, have some of the worst unemployment rates in the country, hovering around 20 percent in at least two or three counties out there. What do you do from Washington to make the environment better for job for growing jobs in South Carolina? Well, I'll tell you, you need to get government out of the way. You know, I, I've heard Republicans talk about this, and I agree with them. We need to deregulate in some of these areas. For instance, I-73. We need to get regulations out of the way so we can put I-73, make it a reality. That's 29,000 jobs that will automatically be created if we start the construction of I-73. Get rid of the regulations for the dredging of the Charleston port. Cut those regulations so that we can start putting South Carolinians to work. Jobs are going to be a huge thing during this next election cycle. Uh, I think there's a reason the PD's been thirded up for two decades now. They haven't had a congressman to speak just for the PD region. There's a reason we have the highest unemployment in the nation, not just South Carolina, in South Carolina, but also in the nation as a region of people because we haven't had representation as a collective group. And I want to be that representative that's going to represent these people, tell their story when we get to Washington, D.C., and fight hard for them. Do you think that this is going to come down to a race, maybe not even Democrat versus Republican, but is it going to come down to Grand Strand versus PD in the end? You know, I hope not because I tell you, uh, what's good for Horry County, what's good for the coast, uh, I think we can have a win-win and marry it up that it's good for the PD. I-73 going right through the heart of the PD over in Dillon, Marion, all these uh, counties will be good for, uh, for the PD overall because then you'll have industry locating. It'll be a huge hub for, for goods and services all throughout the PD. Um, final question for you, and I have to ask you, being a Democrat in this race that a lot of people almost assume is going to go Republican, can a Democrat, do you think, really win this race? 
Let me tell you, I had a Republican strategist and a Democrat strategist working on this race ever since we drew the lines in July. They've come back to me. A Democrat definitely can win this district. The PD's always been an area that we like to call an area that votes for the man or the woman of choice. The person they believe is going to fight the hardest, work the hardest for their interests. People in the PD don't get tied up with party. It's not about party, it's about people. And we need leaders that are going to go to Washington and fight for the common people and the common man out there in this district. And I plan on doing that. I think you may have answered my last question in that with that answer, but I'll ask it anyway because I do it to everybody. Last question for you is why should I vote for you? Let me tell you something. I believe that duty calls, that duty's called me to serve my country. I believe and am dedicated to my family and family values of the PD. And I believe that I am committed to doing, I know I'm committed to doing, the hard work of being a true statesman. And that means somebody that puts party and politics aside and works for the people. That's who Ted Vick's going to be when he gets to Washington. All right, State Representative Ted Vick, Democrat, running for the 7th District, 7th Congressional District seat. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tim. Stay Appreciate it. We'll be right back.